Good evening, everybody. How are you? Oh, Hashem, thank you. Okay. Okay. Yes, yeah, so I think we're doing Gimel. It says here, Tzarich Likrota Kula. We said, right, that you have to read the whole thing. So he brings the source for this, the uh, Perk Bed Megillah, it's the second Perk of Megillah. We learned in Mishnah there, Mehechan Koret Adam et Megillah. So he says, from where does the person... Start to read the Megillah, be upset by Yedich and to false obligation. Uh, Rabbi Meir Omer, Rabbi Meir says, Kula, I have to read the whole thing. Rabbi Uda Omer, Rabbi Uda says, Me Yudi, from that Pasuk, from that verse, Ish Yudi. Rabbi Yosei Omer, Rabbi Yosei says, Me Achar Advaim Ele, from there. So we have three different opinions here. Right? So in the Gemara, I paskins, Halakha, like the one who says that you have to read the whole thing. So therefore, you got to read the whole thing. <coughs> okay, so then it goes on. And then we said, right, in the tour, that if you read it by, uh, by heart, you didn't fully obligation. Right, it's in the Mishnah there. Obviously, right? So therefore, it has to be all written in front of him, says the tour. Uh, it's also there in the Gemara Sham, Yud Tet Amud Aleph, Halacha Kedivri Omer. Halacha is like the one that says, Kula, you have to read the whole thing. Even according to opinion, it says that you have to read from Yish Yudif, uh, right? which means the Jewish man. That's what it means. It has to be written out everything, right? Uh, even, even according to that opinion. So it says, Batafka Lechat Chila, it's only in Lechat Chila, but Yavad. Right, but it says, uh, but b'diavad imishmit ba sofer tevot. If the sofer left out some words, right, then he didn't write the whole thing out. So as we said, right, b'diavad, if a majority is written there, and uh, so b'diavad, you fulfilled your obligation. Yes. Uh, so says the tour regarding uh, the sizbet yosef regarding that. At Sham over there, it's Yud Chet Amud Bet Tanu Tanu Avanan. Right, it says Nigi. Right, Ishmit Ba Asofer Otiot. Let's say the Sofer left out some words, right, whatever letters, Opsukim or verses. The Kerana Kore Kimetul Gaman, and the so the reader when he read it, he read it like a translator because those words were not written. He had to translate whatever, like you know, um, he read it orally. He read it uh, by heart. 
So he says, It's a full obligation. Right? Uh, so he brings an objection. As we said, right, that if there has some letters that are blotted out, or or ripped up, or Ishuman, if they're recognizable, right, as we said, it's okay. Kshirat kosher. Vim la pasula. If it's not recognizable, it's pasul. La kashia. So, right, that's, so there seems to be a contradiction to what we said. So Gemara says, no, there's no contradiction. Ha be kula, ha be kitsamim sata. When it's talking about all of it, you know, which is like not good, uh, that's already going to be a problem. And when it's talking about a part of it, the part of it, if it's not good, uh, we said, right, it's okay. It would be diavad. Katab Rambam ayu ba otiot mitush tashot. So says Rambam, right? If you had there, right, the letters that are blotted out, or mikura ot, or right, or torn up, or imishum in the car, if the handwriting, right, if the if the trace of those letters is recognizable, im haya ruba shalem. If most of it was complete, shera is kosher. Okay. Um lab, if not so, pisula, it's pasul. Nira midvarav shehup ben faresh de me it me utaka rui mixata. So it seems like he calls right uh the minority is part of it, the rubaka rui kula. Uh, just give me one second. Um second, please. Yeah. Anyway, we'll continue. So um, he says, right, that um, we said over there in Nazir, uh, right? We said that the majority is like the whole thing. The Torah also says that. Also, this book says. Yeah, well, looks like I read the wrong piece here. That's why I was stopping. I went back, you know, to... Anyway, we did a review for... We did a review here for something we did already a while ago. So I'll go back to where we were. We're on youth bet. I thought we were... I apologize. Okay, so anyway... Kabul Haraf is introduction, you know. Yeah, this is a review, basically. We already read this before. Yeah. It was. It sounded familiar, you know. That's why I was stopping. Okay. So anyway, uh, we're going back to where we were, which is you'd bet. Gimel, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to you'd gimel. So it says here, Hayak kotva shekore pasuk vekotvo. Right. So now we're going going to a new case, right? Which is that he was reading and writing. So what does that mean? He writes it down, the verse, right? He's writing the Megillah. And as he writes it down, he reads it also. So the question is, did you fulfill your obligation like that? So the, the answer is yes. The Gamze Mishnah Shan, it's also Mishnah there, Yud Zayin Amudalef. Haya Kotva Dorsha Megiyah so the point is like this, right? That if you're reading it and you're also writing it or correcting it or whatever it is, so if you're if you had intention to fulfill your obligation, you did. And if not, you didn't fulfill your obligation. If you didn't have intention. So intention is a very crucial thing, right? You have to have intention. <laughs> so he establishes it in the Gemara. Uh, Kegon, uh, he qualifies it, I'm sorry. Kegon kula kame. The whole thing is written in front of him. He's reading one verse by one verse, verse by verse. Megilta the the Manacha Kame with the Megillah, which is the place before him. The Katab le Dafilu Leman de Amar. So what is he doing? He's uh, right, uh, he's got the whole thing in front of him and he's copying it over, you know, writing a new one, whatever.
ואפילו דמן דאמר, אם הקוראים דאמר נושא הזה, יוצא את עמוד א', מאיש יהודי, that you have to do from איש יהודי, that's good enough, צריכה שתהיה כתובה כולה לפניו. But it has to be all written out, everything. כתב הראש ודורשה, אף על פי שאסור להפסיק במגילה, so it says the ראש, and uh, he's also right, uh, extrapolating it, right, doing explanations, all kinds of things, darshening, right, as we said. So he's darshening it, and uh, even though you're not allowed to do stops in the Megillah, right, to, to do in, interruptions, it says in the second record, so here, when he right, says over that drasha, right, the explanation uh, to the community, or right, or he's doing it just by himself, so it turns out that he's actually, you know, making an interruption here, right? Instead of reading, you know, straight through, he's, you know, stopping and uh, doing some, you know, extrapolation, whatever you want to call it, right? But Bediyabad, he fills obligation. Alternatively, I cannot tell you another way to explain it, which is that since he's only darshaning, right, something which is, you know, connected to the Megillah on, on the same theme, on the same topic. And the Chashuv Apsek, so it's not going to be considered to be an interruption. Ve'achita Birushami, so it says in Yerushami, Ve'dorsha, right, Ve'lvad she'lo yafligu da'atam le'inyanim acherim, right? But he says that, right there, that, uh, you know, you can darshan, you can, you know, ex extrapolate, but what you shouldn't do is start talking about other topics, you know what I mean? All of a sudden, you know, bring something from left field, you know, something else. Uh, we don't want that, right? Obviously, that's that you shouldn't do. Okay, so then goes on. That's exactly what Rabbeinu wrote, right? That you shouldn't interrupt with other things. Right? Uh, so, you know, uh, don't start talking about now something else, you know, politics, you know what I mean? Uh, you're talking about now, right, uh, you know, the elections and this and that, right? The, right the, what does that have to do with what we're talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you gotta right, you gotta make sure you stay on the topic, you know? Okay. So let's go on. But that which he said to tour that he has to, you know, have intention to read it properly. And not just somebody who reads it, you know, to correct it. You know what I mean? He has to also have the intention to fulfill his obligation of the mitzvah. That's what it says in the second perk of Brachot. <clears throat> so if he was reading, right, and um, came the time now to right, uh, read the Megillah, to do the Mitzvah, if he had his intention, he fulfills obligation. If not so, he didn't fulfill the obligation. It says regarding it, right, uh, regarding this in Gimara, Shmamina, uh, you learn from here, mitzvot, mitzvot kavana, that mitzvot require intention, right? In other words, when you do a mitzvah, you have to have intention to do so. Otherwise, you didn't fulfill your obligation. Uh, so he, but he pushes that out and says, what are you talking about that he had intention to read? To read. And he's reading. Right? He's reading, he's reading to, to, to correct it. So he says, lots of uh, explanations were said about this. So he says, I wrote them in chapter 60. So he says, Rabbeinu seems to be going to Tosfot, which I wrote over there, he says, right? What that means. Okay, good. So let's go to Shulchanuch, right? 13. you give Gimel. Okay. So, right, it says the Shulchanuch, Haya Kotva Shekore Pasuk Megila Shu Matik Mimena. Right? So what are we talking about here? That he is... Um, writing a new Megillah. So how do you do that? You copy it over from an existing one. Right? 
So, and as he and he as he copies it over, each verse he reads it out. Yeah. Uh, right. So, what happens over there? Im kiven libo letzet yedecho vayetza. If he had intention to fulfill his obligation, he did. But, right, he says, you have to have the whole Megillah in front of you. So what does that mean? You're copying it over, you know, from a whole complete Megillah. That's what we're talking about. Also, if he was correcting it, right, same thing. He's not copying over something new. He's just correcting the existing one. You know, same thing, right? Also, if he was, as we said, right, darshaning, you know, extrapolating. He darshans as he reads on the verses, right? If he had intention to fulfill his obligation, he did so. But he says, you shouldn't talk about other things, right? Uh, you know, Darshaning is one thing, you know what I mean? But don't talk about now, right, what happened in Iowa, you know, and the, New Hampshire, you know, who cares about that? What does that have to do with the, right, uh, with, with the Torah? What does that have to do with Megillah? You shouldn't talk about other things. Okay, good. That's the, the Shulchan Aruch, Yud Gimel. Let's go to Yud Dalad. It says here is right that the tour says that right the reader has to also have intention uh, to have fulfills obligation when he reads. So he says he passed connect the rosh here. Rabbeinu the tour shehu sover kedata omrim that he holds like the opinion that says mitzvot tzrichat kavanah that mitzvot require intention. Like um right, it was explained in this chapter, right? Which is um 589. Okay. Uh right? So it says we we deduce from here the heaven the had the okma lematnitin that since uh, right we qualified the Mishnah, the him kiven li bo yatsa that if he uh, had intention he fulfills obligation. When he's correcting it, uh, he's reading to correct it. That's in order that you shouldn't right, learn from there that the mitzvot require intention. But according to one says that you know the mitzvot do require intention. So even if he uh, right uh, reads it in a normal way, it's okay, right? You can qualify like that. Um okay. What's the yeah. normal way? Ah <laughs> that mean, the, the normal way means that he didn't have intention. Okay, thank you. You know, just reading, you know. Right? Oh. Uh, in order to correct it, whatever he's doing there, right? Okay. That's what it means. Okay, so uh even there, like this, he didn't fulfill obligation. He has to have intention, right? That, and that's the one point. So he says, since Rabbeinu the Tur, right, concludes that the mitzvot do require intention. Right, he shouldn't have written, but and not like the one who right, reads to to correct it. But so he says you have to say that. In any case, right, since after Divi Almer, even according to one who says that mitzvot don't require intention, so he does admit, right, in a case where he shouldn't read like one who intends to correct it. And even though he concludes the tour that mitzvot do require intention, Katuv Katav Ken Lomar Beha Kule Alma Mode, right? So it says regarding this, everybody he wrote this in order, in order to tell you, teach you that regarding this, everybody admits. 
And then he goes on, ומה שכתב ביד הבעין על שיכוון הקורא על השומע בפרט להוציאו ואינו דווקא יחיד הקורא אבל השליח ציבור, מסתמא דעתו על הכל. Ah, so he says, right, that also another thing which we require, the tour says, that uh, the reader has to, has to have intention to fulfill the obligation of the one who's listening, right, the listener. He requires that. So it says uh, the uh, the tour right regarding that 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 only applies you know in a private setting, but if you're talking about somebody who's a chazan you know bal kore, somebody who's a reader, the appointed reader, right? Um, then we assume that he, of course he has right he has in mind to fulfill the obligation of the whole community, everybody who's there you know. So you don't require you know special intention for that. Because we assume, right, that he has that intention. You know what I mean? Why is he reading for everybody? Because he has to fulfill the obligation. So that's why, right? Let's say, for instance, I'll give you an example where this applies, this concept. For instance, let's say a person, you know, um, they were reading the Megillah in, you know, in the shul, you know, and uh, one guy is like standing outside the room. You know, let's say he's, like he's standing in the hallway, right? Uh, so, but the reader doesn't see this guy, right? He doesn't see him there because uh, he's outside. So the question is, does he fulfill the obligation of somebody that he's not even cognizant that the guy's there? This is the question, you know? So according to this, right, we say, what we just said now, we say that he doesn't have to be cognizant of anything because... The fact that he's the shliach tzibur, he's the chazan, bal kore, that means that you know automatically he has the intention to fulfill the obligation of anybody who happens to be listening there. So therefore, even though you know he doesn't have intention on that particular person who's standing outside, it doesn't matter. It works anyway. That's what we're saying. So yeah, so he says that regarding this, Bet Yosef. He says, this was already explained in that chapter, right, uh, that we used to talk about. Uh, so then he goes on, Yerushalmi, brings Yerushalmi, and Oh, so this is, uh, right, one of the um, most uh, interesting topics of the Megillah, that, uh, right, it says Yerushalmi, that we're not so particular when it comes to mistakes, you know, um, in the Megillah. So we should read this in the tour inside because uh, there's uh, you know there's things here that which, which are not quoted there. So let's see the tour inside. Right, so here's it says the truth like this. You show me and Medakta Kin right? So it says that we're not particular about the mistakes. Right? Um, so by the way, is that the same in the Sefer Torah? Are we particular about this mistakes in the Sefer Torah? So the answer is yes, we are very particular about that. Right? So the Rambam says, you know, even the little mistake, you know, that a person made when he reads the Sefer Torah. We have to correct him, you know, and tell him to go back and read it again. So when it comes to separate Torah, we are very exacting and precise, you know. There's no monkey business there. But now the question is, right, does that also apply to the Megillah? Or are we a little bit more lax, you know, with the Megillah? Because, you know, the Megillah is only from the rabbis, you know, after all. Right, so maybe we can be a little bit more lenient, blah, 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 right? Uh, you know, uh, maybe the rabbis were not so pre precise and exacting about this mitzvah. And by the way, there's a reason why they wouldn't be. And the reason is because, you know, all after all, you know, it's like the whole point is, you know, with the Megillah, like you want to hear the story, you know, like you want to get the, the narrative, you know, and one little mistake is not going to change anything, you know what I mean? Like you, you still got it. You got the narrative. And so this is the reason why we're not so precise about the Megillah. 
you know, because the whole point is, you know, they just want you to get the story, make sure you understand what happened there, you know, the miracle that occurred, the, the whole story, you know, the salvation, blah, blah, blah. And so once you know that, you know, what do I really care, you know, about one little letter, you know, you read the wrong way. Right, that's that's the idea, you know. Uh, so let's go on a little bit because we have to explain what that means, right, how that works. Rabbi Tzchak Bar Abba the Rabbi Hanina Abu Yatve Kameh the Rabbi Rav. So these rabbis were sitting all together. So he says, "Chad Kare Yudim, the Chad Kare Yudim." Right. So one person right read Yehudim, which means the Jews, right? Uh, you know, and but then the other one reads Yehudim with two uh, two Yuds. You know. So it's a little bit different. You understand? Uh, one Yud, two Yuds. It's not read exactly the same way. What's the difference? When you read Yehudim with two Yuds, it's like a longer, you know, uh, vowel there, you know? Yehudim! Right? But Yehudim, right? Short. That's with one. One Yud. Two, two Yuds, it's like Yehudim. You know, so here's like an example, right? You didn't read it exactly the right way. One read it, you know, short. The other one read it a little bit longer. So, you know, the question is, do we tell them to go back and read it again, or do we just, like, you know, let them go, you know, let them slide? So he says, right, that none of them went back to read it again. So meaning what? That, you know, these kind of small mistakes, you know, are are not really so uh, significant. So therefore, we, we let it go. We let it slide, you know. But we're gonna, you know, talk a little bit about this a little bit more. But we're gonna, you know, we're gonna elaborate on this. But the point is like this, you know, that the reason why we're not so we're not so precise here about this kind of thing is because the two words mean the same thing, you know, with two yuds, one yud, it means the same thing, has the same meaning. But right, we're gonna see that if you made a mistake where the meaning changes, the meaning of the word changes, that's already something else so that you cannot we cannot let it go, right? We have to we have to correct that. Okay. Does that apply with the whole I and Aleph situation too? Oh, <laughs> I and Aleph. Oh, that's a good one. Oh my God. <laughs> well, you know, if you are Sephardi, right? Then you you did that. You know, you made that mistake. It's like a card, a little card. You know, you're going to be going be going going on death row basically for that. <laughs> you're going to you're going to be God forbid you're going to be executed for that. <laughs> But there are cases where it changes. Yeah, I'm joking. I'm joking. You know, I'm exaggerating a little yeah, I bit. But I mean, there yeah. are cases where it's it changes the meaning of the word. It does. It's true. Yeah, you have to be careful with that. Uh, you know, like for instance, you know, um, regarding Birkat Hakohenim, right? Over there, it says in Shulchan Aruch, you have to be very careful not to switch the Ein and the Aleph. Why? Because you could get the wrong meaning altogether. You know what I mean? Uh, there are places like this where it really messes it up big time, you know? So again, right, the, it, uh, the same rule applies regarding this Ein and Aleph. The rule is that if you read it and it changed the meaning of the word, you, you got a problem, you know? You got to go read it again. But if it just, you know, you weren't so precise, you know, and you you know, you know, didn't go into your throat and bring out that Ein, you know, like the Sephardi way, you know what I mean? We'll, we'll let you slide on that one, probably. You know what I mean? As, as long as people understand what you read. Because otherwise, if it wasn't so, right, you couldn't even go to an Ashkenazi reading, you know, and reading, of, you know, you, you wouldn't be able to go to an Ashkenazi reading, right? If that was the case, you know what I mean? So you can, you can go to an Ashkenazi reading, you know, if you don't have a Swati one, right? If you're a Swati, you don't have a Swati reading. You can go to Ashkenazi reading. Why is that? Because you know what they're saying. You know what I mean? Like, you know, like you, you get it. You know, they don't read it, you know, the eye in the proper way, but uh, you you know what they're talking about. Uh, so, you know, as long as the meaning of the word is not changed, you're good. That's the idea, you know? Okay, so, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, but, uh, you know, especially when you go to Israel, you have to know that if you don't read the Ein over there, you know, boy, you're going to be in trouble. They're going to, they're going to, they're going to have your head. <laughs> they're going to, they're going to get on your case for that. You know, they don't, they don't forgive on that in Israel. <laughs> okay. So, uh, 
But uh, that's the way it is. Okay, so anyway, right? Uh, but as we said, right, the rule is like that, like I told you. That, uh, you know, if you go to Ashkenazi reading, uh, you're okay, as long as you understand what they're saying, which you should, I hope you do. <laughs> right? Uh, sometimes the, the tabs yeah. and saws are really, are really dis distracting. What I was going to say is that, you know, with the Hasidic reading, you know what I'm saying, sometimes you don't really understand what they're saying. You know what I mean? Like, because they, like, they, go, they go way off. You know, like they, they really, you know, twist it, you know, like twist it around. Uh, so, you know, so better to go to a regular Ashkenazi reading, you know. <laughs> I can't tell you. Okay, well, you know, there's always priorities, you know what I mean? Uh, whatever, right? Uh, the best thing is to go to a Sephardi reading, you know, especially if you're a Sephardi, right? Uh, but if you can't, right, go to a normal Ashkenazi, right? Don't go to Hasidish because Hasidish... They really, you know, exaggerate, you know, the, the, the changes. They really, you know, whatever. I, I wouldn't recommend it so much. Let's put it this way. Okay. But, you know, if you got nothing better, what can you do, right? Maybe maybe you can get away with that, you know, maybe, perhaps. Perhaps. Okay. So, uh, like I remember, you know, I had a friend over here who came from Israel. And uh, so, you know, he was praying at a Hasidic, uh, you know, minion, you know, in the morning, Shach Shachrit. So he comes and tells me, he says, he says, I, said, I don't understand. He says, these Hasidim, he says, instead of starting with the word Hodu, they start Hodi, you know, Hodi. It's like... Instead of saying Hodu, they say Hodi. So that's already a big change, you know what I mean? It's like, they... <laughs> you don't want to get involved in that stuff, you know what I mean? Better, better to stay away from it. Okay. They make the O into an E, right? That's what they do. They, they change it, you know? They uh, they do it on purpose, you know? Uh, whatever. Okay, so anyway, right, getting back to what you said. So, uh, right? So, again, right, he says, some say it only applies when the meaning doesn't change. But if the meaning does change, then you got a problem. Like we just mentioned, right? Uh, because then, right, the problem is that you're not reading the whole Megillah, you didn't read the whole Megillah, right? Because, uh, you know, something you said wrong, you know, and you, the meaning changed, so you got a problem, right? Uh, okay, good. Also, right, when you say. The ten sons of Haman, right? Uh, when you mention those names, Ben uh, you have to say all in one breath, right? You ever, you ever notice this? That the Chazan, right? The Baal Koreh says the whole name, you know, the ten names. He, he tries to do it in one breath. Lechatchila, you should try to do that. But the Avad, it's okay, you know. But Lechatchila, you should try. So it's that's also from Yushami, right? You have to say in one breath. Okay, let's go on. So he says, uh, good. So let's do the Bet uh, Yosef. So it says Bet Yosef regarding what we just read. Katvua Rosh, right? It's also written in the Rosh, this whole thing. Ve'aran, also the Ran. Ve'ika, the Medak, the Havale Lomar, right? Uh, and there is, right, to to deduce here, they should have said, Ahadar, um, Leman de Ta'e, right? Um, that, uh, no, one second. Did I say it right? Yeah. Ahadar, Man de Amar, Velo Ahadar, and he did, didn't go back to the man the man the amar yudim the ahu ahu the ta'e aval ahu the amar yudim the shapir kamar lo havale le madre vesh to mar de lo nachit hashta kamuda le shminan hemina yu shapir kamar e man de amar yudim o man de amar yudim so says the bet yosef right that you know if you notice right that when we talked about the story where one said yudim and one said yudim right with two yuds so you know they didn't really notify us there in the, in the Talmud who was right and who was wrong. But, you know, none of them went back. So he says the reason, you know, they didn't 
they didn't specify who made the mistake, it's because it doesn't really matter. You know, whichever one it may be, it's all the same. You know what I mean? So therefore, right, either way, it's okay. This is also there's another way to explain it, which is that maybe there's actually a dispute, you know, uh, which is the proper way to read that word, right? Yehudim or Yehudim, right? Uh, and we're not sure which one is the right one. So therefore, right, either way, you're okay, because, you know, as we said, right, it doesn't change the meaning of the, of the word. So he says that, right, the one who said that story didn't know who was right and who was wrong. So he says, Rab definitely do. And since he didn't go back, you didn't go, tell him to go back. So you see from there that we're not particular about mistakes, right, when it comes to Megillah, as we said, right, as long as the meaning doesn't change. Okay. So then he goes on here, right, a little bit more. Uh, as we said, right, now he brings that point where, you know, some say it only applies when the meaning doesn't change. That's what it says in Iran. Right, so even though you can push it out, um, that right, uh, whoever reads, can push it out and say whoever reads the word even though he didn't read it right properly he read the whole thing still, still called it he read the whole thing so it says this book that some say right something like that one you two youths right as we said right if he if he changes the the word altogether you know like that nafal or like this uh, he has to go back, right? So in other words, according to this opinion, you know, it has to be something like a very small mistake like this, you know? One, one you, two yuds. But if you have something larger, so meaning what? That the structure of the word is being changed altogether, you know? The tense or, you know, whatever it may be, right? The plural, you know, uh, right? The singular, this, that. That's already a big mistake, you know? You got to go back for that. So let's see how the Shulchan Ruch Paskins, right? Regarding this, uh, we we found here several opinions regarding this issue. So he says, Right, so he says, if you read the Megillah, you have to have intention from both sides, right? The one who's listening has to have an intention to fulfill his obligation from the reader, and also the reader to the listener. It's a two-way street, right? Takes two to tango, as they say, right? Uh, you have to have intention both ways. But, but he says, if it's that's something else, right? Then we assume that his intention is on everybody. That's something else. We're not talking about that. Ah, like, as, as I told you, right? He points out the Shulchan Ruch, even if they're behind the shul, they're not in the room. They're outside, you know? But still, he has his intention is on them too. Why not? He came there to, to, you know, to fulfill the obligation of everybody, right? Not just half the crowd, right? You know what I mean? Obviously. So he goes on. Another thing is, as we said, right? We're not so particular about the mistakes. So now the question is, right? What does that mean, right? Um, some say that means that, uh, right? That's only when, you know, the meaning doesn't change, right? Right, like these two right uh, Talmidim that were sitting in front of Rab. One said Yehudim, one said Yehudim, right? Uh, like something like that. Very small mistake. Right, and uh, so he says, uh, and neither one went back, right? But if it's a different mistake, right, not so. Would that also qualify if you skipped a word? Ah, 
if you skip the word, right? Uh, so that's 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 a bigger problem. If you skip the word, uh, so if if the reader skips a word, we have to tell him to go back and read it again uh, because he's got to read the whole thing, right, from top to bottom. Uh -huh. So let me just explain that right a little bit. Let me elaborate on that. That because um, we already read through this, you know, this whole topic pretty much covered it, right, from all the angles. So I'll just, you know, review now, right, a little bit, a little bit of a review. What we said is like this, right, that um, if the, you have to read the whole Megillah, right, that's the halacha. So if you skip the word, you got a problem. You did not fulfill your obligation. That's one thing. But there's also another thing, you know, which is that sometimes you have a Megillah, which is lacking words, you know, or lacking verses, right? So what about if the reader read those words, you know, orally, right? So he read it by heart. So Bediyavad, you fulfill your obligation. Why is that? Because he read the whole thing, you know? Some of it was by heart. So Bediyavad, you know, the obligation is fulfilled. But we said, right, that's only if it's a minority missing, you know, of the of the topic matter, right, of the texts, you know. But if you have a majority missing, that's already, you know, you can't, there's no way to correct that. So yeah. for someone who doesn't know the Hebrew, how, they wouldn't necessarily know whether something was missed or, or a word was mispronounced. Is this still? Yeah, well, you know, we're getting to a sticky, we're getting to a sticky topic here, you know. All right, that's a sticky one, right? Uh, why do I tell you that? Because this is where, you know, it becomes into like a, kind of like a, you know, where you get into doubts about this kind of thing. I'll explain to you what I mean. What I mean to say is like this, right? That sometimes, you know, a person is listening to the Megillah. Now, the, the one who reads it, that's something else, right? The reader himself, he knows if he read it or not, right? That's for sure. You know? He knows what he read. He does. He knows what he, does, he didn't read. But here's the problem, right? When you, when it comes to the listener, he doesn't always know what he heard. You know, sometimes he's just like daydreaming. You know what I mean? So the question is, if the listener is like daydreaming a little bit, does he fulfill his obligation? And the answer is yes. It has to be because otherwise, right? None of us have fulfilled our obligation ever. <laughs> you know, because I mean? we all daydream. You know what I mean? So as long as you heard it, you know, in other words, it went into your ears, even though it didn't register because you're daydreaming, you did fulfill your obligation because you heard it. But, right, uh, so, you know, like these are like gray areas now. We're getting into the gray area, you know. Uh, by the way, I do have some posts on this written, you know, in Halakha uh, that I posted, you know, in the... The four more years, I'm going to post them again this year, Bezad Hashem. So the thing is, you know, that there are some Rishonim who say that the listener, you know, who didn't hear one word, did not fulfill his obligation. So you got to be careful, you know, like in other words, to make sure that you're not making any noise or somebody else is not making noise. Because it could be, you know, that one word didn't really go into your ear, you know, because I you know there was noise or something or whatever, you know, whatever it was. So you got to try as hard as you can uh, to make sure, you know, that, uh, you know, you don't, you hear the whole thing. But it doesn't mean you have to, you know, it all has to register because, you know, we daydream. You know how it is, right? But uh, anyway, the point is like this, right? What I wrote in my post was, if you're not sure, let's say, you know, if you didn't hear one word or something like that, you can be lenient because it's only rabbinical, you know. Since it's only rabbinical, we, we go in rabbinical doubts, we go lenient, right? That's the way it is. So, you know, uh, right? Uh, that's the reason why you can be lenient, you know. But if you're sure that you didn't hear some parts, you know what I mean? So then what do you do? So what you do is, you know, you should read it yourself. Like, even though you don't have a kosher megillah, but since you're doing the minority by heart, you know, you'll be okay. So, in other words, if you didn't hear some words from the chazan, Right, 
and you know whatever it was for some reason you didn't hear just look into your Megillah and read it yourself you know and catch up to him you know because that means you read the minority of it by heart which is okay the Diavad okay are we getting somewhere with that are we uh, right the... thank you I hope, I hope we're getting somewhere Okay, that's pretty much a story, right? What can I tell you, right? So you got to be careful. The bottom line is, right, you got to be careful, you know, make sure. That's why we don't want these kids with the noisemakers over there, you know, coming in, making noise, because, you know, we're not going to hear the Megillah like that, you know? That's the, the reason I, we tell them, you know, to wait till the end and then to, you know, make their noises in the end, right? In Israel, you know, they used to listen when we used to tell them that. Here in America, nobody listens, you know? So uh, what you have to do is when the kids start making noise, you have to, you know, the Chazan has to reread the whole thing, you know, that, you know, during the noise, you know what I mean? He has to read that part. He has to reread that. Because, you know, we, we have to assume that the people didn't hear because of the noise. There's all kinds of issues, you know, it's not so simple. Okay, very good. So be blessed with wealth, health, happiness. Have, thanks for coming. Chazak Baruch, we'll see you tomorrow, Bezat Hashem. And uh, pray for our amazing soldiers. I'm, 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 I'm looking at videos today of the job that they're doing over there, you know, unbelievable work, you know, my God, you know, these soldiers are so brave, you know, and so, so powerful, you know, Hashem is on their side, what can I tell you, you know, it's, you know, and uh, right, uh, just have to give them, give our hats off to these people, you know, how they're suffering there, you know, going and, you know, and, and they, they have no qualms about it, you know, they go in, you know, they're so brave and, you know, so powerful and just incredible, you know, it's, it's unbelievable. Hashem should, Hashem should help them to, to finish off all the Nazis. Visit Hashem. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Amen.